Thank you. Yeah, weather plays into this story. 12 News has reported extensively on the rapid growth we're seeing here in Arizona. And a question often asked is, do we have enough water for all these new people? But maybe an equally important question should be, do we have enough power? Longer, hotter summers have more air conditioners running more hours. And high-tech projects are moving here that require unprecedented amounts of electricity to operate. It has our utilities scrambling to keep up with demand. So some are saying one answer for our future energy needs is expanding what is already the most powerful nuclear power plant in our country. And it's less than an hour's drive from downtown Phoenix. It cuts an imposing presence in the desert, just 45 miles from the heart of Phoenix. Massive concrete domes, huge ponds and cooling towers. The Palo Verde Nuclear Generating Station is the most powerful nuclear plant in the United States, providing enough energy to serve 4.5 million people in Arizona, California, New Mexico, Nevada, and Texas. We got a tour. So this is our uh, Unit 2. The big dome is, is where the reactor's held. Tim Gaffney is the work management director at Palo Verde. He showed us some of the security protecting the installation, including these huge doors designed to withstand a missile attack they protect a big backup generator. Tim, show me these really quickly. I don't think I've ever seen a cement door this thick. Why, why do we have the thickness on these that, doors? That is a uh, missile missile door. So you're Same protecting it with a 46,000 pound door? We The door, yeah. We want to protect these. The plant uses the reaction of nuclear fuel in water to heat that water to very high temperatures. That water then heats clean, non-radioactive water that is pumped into a building next door as steam, turning these massive turbines and generating the electricity. These cooling towers outside safely cool that water down. The water Palo Verde uses for all this is stored in massive ponds, and it's actually wastewater pumped in from Phoenix. The power generated goes into the electrical grid. And if you've ever wondered what the actual grid looks like, take a look. Palo Verde is home to the biggest switcher in the western grid. 12,000 megawatts of electricity flow through here, enough to power over 12 million customers. Palo Verde, these three reactors, put 4,200 megawatts of power onto that, right? So a third of the power in that switchyard are from these, these reactors. But as with all forms of generating electricity, even wind, solar, and hydroelectric, there are trade-offs. With nuclear energy, one of the big ones is the spent radioactive fuel. We have no national plan to deal with it. In fact, every ounce of nuclear material ever used at Palo Verde, incredibly, since the 1980s, is still sitting in these huge metal and concrete casks. The nuclear material inside can be dangerous for tens of thousands of years. Still, nuclear energy is seen as more and more important to reduce carbon emissions while generating massive amounts of power. Maintaining existing nuclear and hopefully growing new nuclear is paramount. Ted Geisler is the president of APS. He sees nuclear as his top priority for meeting the Valley's energy needs of the future. Some leaders, including newly elected Senator Ruben Gallego, want to expand Palo Verde from three reactors to five, boosting its power output. But that's not something that can happen overnight. We have to be realistic about the timing. It's likely not going to come to fruition until the mid to late 2030s. But the planning does start now. And the president of APS told me he just got an application for a data center that would be here in the valley, one data center that would use as much electricity as the city of Charlotte, North Carolina. So to fill that demand and more, there's talk of using small modular nuclear reactors like this. They'd be built in a factory and then dropped into places like old shutdown coal plants that are already connected to the energy grid. A site in St. John's has been talked about, but again, we're likely looking at more than a decade until these start to go online. If you're interested in more on this topic, we posted an extra 13 minutes of raw video of my tour of Palo Verde online. It was fascinating, and it's available right now on our 12 Plus app, where we're posting more and more original news content every single day. Great, babe. All right, Troy, thank you. Still ahead.